untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at Blue Black Ninjas, a deck that got quite a bit better over time as some of the key cards got upgraded through Alchemy, which also applies to Historic. So in the case of Silver for Master, we can now Ninjutsu for just a Blue Black Hybrid as opposed to a Blue and a Black. The Moon Circuit Hacker first lets us scry 2 and then draw a card as opposed to just drawing a card. And a Thousand Face Shadow cost 2 and a blue to Ninjutsu as opposed to 2 and double blue. So that also makes a pretty big difference, especially alongside Silver Fur Master, which gives us a 1 mana discount for Ninjutsu abilities. So getting to copy a Silver Fur Master with our Thousand Face Shadow can lead to some blowouts and potentially even turn 3 kills, which is quite exciting. Then our deck is also playing the Ornithopter plus Foundry package. So we've got four copies of Ornithopter, a perfect ninjutsu enabler as we can attack with it, often goes unblocked, and then we can ninjutsu and then replay Ornithopter for free to set up our next ninja. And then we can also play a Retrofitter Foundry on turn one alongside Ornithopter, and then we can tap, sacrifice a Thopter to create a 4-4 construct creature token. So that can already happen on turn one thanks to our Thopter. And then the Foundry can also be a decent mana sink, making a servo token for two mana, maybe upgrade it into a 1-1 Flying Thopter and eventually a 4-4 Construct. We also have four more Thopters in the form of Changeling Outcast, which is a Changeling, has all creature types, including a Thopter as well as a Ninja, so it does get buffed by Silver for Master, and we can also sacrifice it to our Retrofitter Foundry to make additional 4-4 Constructs early on. And then as an unblockable creature, it's also perfect to set up a Ninjutsu. And then a Fairy Seer is another Ninjutsu enabler. As a 1-1 flyer, it's likely to go unblocked, so we can pick it back up with Ninjutsu. And when it enters, we get to Scry 2, so it can help set up our next draw steps. And by picking it up and replaying it, we get to Scry 2 once again. The only drawback is that it's not a Ninja or Rogue in this deck, so it does not get pumped by our Silver Fur Master. But uh, of course, besides pumping our team, Master also gives us a 1 mana discount for Ninjutsu, which is very relevant with our Thousand Face Shadow. So we'll only be 1 and a blue to Ninjutsu with a Master in play, potentially just a single blue if we have multiple Masters. And that's also an interaction that can come up if we have multiple Thousand Face Shadows that we're going to Ninjutsu in the same turn. And then when it enters a battlefield from our hand, if it's attacking, we get to create a token that's a copy of another target attacking creature. And the token also enters a battlefield tapped and attacking. So let's say we have a Silver for Master on the battlefield alongside Ornithopter, we're attacking, we have three mana and two copies of Shadow in hand. The first one we can Ninjutsu for one and a blue, making a copy of Silver for Master, giving us another Lord to pump the team, and giving us one more cost reduction. So now the second Shadow we can Ninjutsu for just a single blue, make another copy of the Master, and all of a sudden we're attacking the opponent with a bunch of 4-4 unblocked Ninjas that can potentially end the game on turn three, so that's pretty nice. And then we've got four copies of Moon Circuit Hacker, can Ninjutsu for just a single blue, and and then that's cry to and then draw. So also gives us quite a bit of card selection. Now it's not the best when facing opposing Orcish Bowmasters, so that's why we're not going all in on the card draw ninjas like we might in other builds. And instead, by keeping the curve low, we get to run Lurus as companion, which can get back all our cheap ninjas. Also very good with the Foundry plus Ornithopter package. And then we can play Orcish Bowmasters ourselves, which is also quite good in this deck, punishing opposing card draw. And by making two different bodies, it's also a very good ninjutsu enabler. We can maybe even copy it with our Thousand Face Shadow to make multiple Bowmasters to mow the opponent's creatures down. So there's a lot of great synergy throughout. And then we also have a bit of interaction with four copies of Fatal Push. And our deck is also very good at enabling Revolt for it, since by picking up a creature with Ninjutsu, a Revolt is enabled, so we can take out larger creatures with it as well. And then a four copies of Spell Pierce to deal with non-creature spells. So we've got both our bases covered. And with all the card selection from Fairy Seer and Moon Circuit Hacker, we can usually find at least one of these copies in the matchups where we need them. And then the mana base is mostly just blue-black dual lands that enter the battlefield untapped. We also have an Abandoned Mire and a Soaring City that can be channeled, and one Hive giving us an extra creature land to maybe help close out the game. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems acceptable. Got that turn one Ornithopter plus Fairy Seer. Let's cry towards more Ninjutsu cards. And a Silver Fur Master will do. Do I want to keep a Bowmaster as well? It's not a bad card. Next turn, Ninjutsu Master, picking up Ornithopter. And then I could also Ninjutsu the Hacker, turn after, go off with Thousand Faced Shadow. And then we could still 
Maybe cast a 1-drop, but not a 2-drop. I don't think I have time for Bowmasters. Would prefer to pick up another 1-mana play. Can at least use Hive to Ninjutsu a Master, and then the blue mana for Hacker. Thoughtseize. Luckily cannot take away our Master, so probably takes Hacker. Okay, in that case... I don't really want to play Shadow until I can Ninjutsu it. So what we could do is attack picking up Fairy Seer so I can replay it and Scry. Do miss out on one damage that way, but that's alright. And then another Shadow I'll keep. Hope they can't... Fatal push my silver for master now. Shambling Ghast is fine. And a village rides to draw to, make a treasure. Or take out Fairy Seer, that's fine. So our opponent is now tapped out. Can still attack. And this turn is going to be pretty sweet. Can ninjutsu this for two mana. Thanks to the discount from master, pick up Ornithopter. Copy Silver for Master, and then a Ninjutsu this for just a single blue. Pick up a Thousand Face Shadow, copy Silver Fur. And hit the opponent for 16, no big deal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing a 1 mana enabler for Ninjutsu, don't have any Thopters for Foundry. So that's a mulligan. Alright, this is better. And then one Ornithopter can go. Opponent's blue-red. If this is Wizards, it's going to be a tough battle. Since they tend to have a lot of removal to prevent us from ever getting the ball rolling with our ninjutsu creatures. Fatal push I definitely want to keep. Watery Grave, probably not so much. Okay. So they didn't have a 1-mana creature, but turn 2 could see Dreadhorde Arcanist, or Balmor, also quite good. So I probably still have to Fatal Push. Flying blockers are also quite annoying for us, but not keeping Fatal Push for Arcanist getting haste at some point is not where I want to be. But yeah, let's say we Fatal Push, I attack, do I even Ninjutsu the Master when I don't have any ninjas in play? Maybe I just play another Fairy Seer then. And then is the one damage really worth firing off Fatal Push for? I guess not. So we'll see what's on top first. Hive and another Bowmasters. Not the best matchup for Bowmasters. Even their opponent does have a couple cantrips that it can punish. One damage often not enough to kill anything significant. So I think we just pass the turn. Only downside is if our opponent has the uh, two mana card draw that rewards them for controlling a wizard. I would rather take out Balmor first and yeah, speak of the devil, Mentor's Guidance. Okay, um, I guess we let that resolve. Opponent gets a copy either way. Although I have seen a bug where if you kill the creature in response, they don't get to actually cast both copies. But that's not how it's supposed to work. Take two, sure. Now I don't need to Fatal Push and we can Ninjutsu. So get in with everyone. And Ninjutsu, pick up Ornithopter. Sadly, Fairy Seer doesn't get pumped by the Silver Fur. That's the one kind of missing synergy in this deck. But now we've got Bowmasters and Fatal Push at the ready. And there's Arcanist, so now we can maybe set up our Fatal Push. Yeah, so... Do we let our opponent cast the Mentor's Guidance? We could also punish them with Orcish Bowmasters, to be fair. Which may work out better. We'll get three triggers, that's enough to kill one of the opponent's two creatures. Yeah, you know what, let them uh, 
caster mentor's guidance. Play bowmasters. Take out arcanist. And our opponent's gonna have a pretty full grip, so they will have a lot of cards to work with. But hopefully we can leverage this tempo advantage. Outcast. Okay, let's attack with everyone. Ornithopter, I guess, can hang back. Opponent falls to five. Play outcast. Keep up fatal push. But now we might see some removal on our creatures. Another Arcanist, so now we can try to fatal push it if they give it haste. Could see a Wizard's Lightning, plus another Reckless Charge. Yeah, that happens. And there's a Wizard's Lightning on Silver for Master, presumably. Nope, just goes upstairs. That's why we wait on casting the Fatal Push, give them less information to work with. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they're just dead on board here next turn. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand is decent. So we've got Outcast to go with Foundry, although the second Foundry is pretty redundant. And then Thousand Face Shadow is also not the best in this hand, admittedly. So maybe this is a mulligan since we don't really have any interaction. And uh, I could not have Foundry or Thousand Face Shadow, and this hand would pretty much do the same thing. So we'll take a mulligan. Yeah, this hand is decidedly worse. Triple Outcast, Fairy Seer, Spell Pierce. Let go of Outcasts. If Fairy Seer doesn't find a couple ninjas, this hand doesn't do anything. Alright, we can try this. I'm gonna have to play one of the pathways on blue, turn one for Fairy Seer. So one Fatal Push can go. And then, do I want to keep Ornithopter or Thousand Faced Shadow? Probably Ornithopter, since Shadow is 3 mana to Ninjutsu. And then if I find a Foundry, that would be nice with Ornithopter. Opponent on what looks like a modular deck. Okay, Master was a good draw. So I can play Fairy Seer plus Ornithopter. And a Bowmasters could be okay too. Although I don't expect uh, Zabas to stay a 1-1 for very long. Hanger back walker. Okay. So Zabaz can potentially destroy their own artifacts with a red ability. And if Hanger back ever dies and makes a bunch of 1-1 flyers, that's going to be a problem. But what we can do is play Bowmasters, destroying either one of them. And I'm guessing killing Hanger back before it picks up any more counters is worth it, even though it will make a 1-1 flyer. So I can attack for one first. Uh, let's just Bowmasters the Hangar back while we can. And then Fatal Push can still be another effective answer. Synthesizer. Also pretty good in a low curve artifact deck. Points good another Hangar back. Do they also have a land? They do. Okay. So we're kind of in a similar situation to last turn, except our opponent now has a 1-1 Thopter as well. Outcast the draw. So what if I attack with everyone, can Ninjutsu the Master, and then still Fatal Push? I guess it's worth a try. And then I'm hoping they don't block the Bowmasters so I can pick it back up. Our opponent's probably running green for Hardened Scales as well. And then you also list also potentially an option to go with all the plus one counter synergy. Opponent will block Bowmasters. And the Fairy Seer. 
Okay, let's ninjutsu for blue. Pick up ornithopter. And then before hanger back picks up that plus one counter from Zabaya, so we can fatal push it. So your opponent only gets one Thopter token. So the board looks a bit cleaner. But we don't have much action left in hand. So we'd love to find a Foundry especially with Ornithopter and Changeling Outcast in play. Opponent might be running Voltage Surge or Shrapnel Blast. Deal 5. Take out Master. And Frexian Tower, what they found. Another Master. I could Ninjutsu. And then at some point Lurus could also be an important factor. Our opponent is not running Lurus themselves, so can expect some uh, 3 mana permanence in their deck as well. Our opponent does have a Blink Moth Nexus, can turn into a 1 1 flyer, and uh, can also potentially pump itself with the ability. So if they use it defensively, can grow up to a 2 2 flyer, which is good enough to block Ornithopter. So our opponent does not let us ninjutsu, basically. But it does mean having to trade away the Thopter. Okay. In that case, just play Outcast, I guess. And then next turn we can potentially Ninjutsu. A second Blink Moth Nexus, okay. So those can uh, bump each other on offense now too. Wormlet also makes sense in a plus one counter artifact deck. So Ornithopter can no longer attack, but we have an unblockable Outcast, so that'll still do the trick. Get in for one, Ninjutsu, and then replay Outcast. But it's going to animate Blink Moth anyway. Okay, at least for a Mulligan to five, we're still putting up a decent fight. But we're very far behind on mana, so if our opponent ever casts something big here, we could be in trouble. Although it does strike me like a relatively low curve deck, of course, with cards like Hangar Bank, you can sink additional mana into it. Opponent just hangs back with a bunch of untapped mana. And Hive Hunter is tapped, so can't access Lures just yet. But uh, yeah, can attack with a Changeling Outcast at the very least and play another one. Opponent does a Blink Moth Nexus Dance to maybe have an artifact to sacrifice to another Shrapnel Blast. Yep. So our opponent's got one card left. Their board isn't super threatening, although Blink Moth definitely a relevant uh, piece of the puzzle here as an extra flying blocker. And a Moon Circuit Hacker is an excellent draw. So our opponent does still have a Blink Moth Nexus left, which can also pump itself on defense up to a 2-2. So they can technically still block Ornithopter, but I believe our opponent's going to be tempted to uh, block our Silver Fur Master while they can. So I think we still attack with everyone, so we can Ninjutsu with Ornithopter. And there's Foundry. That's excellent. So we can play that. Sacrifice either Ornithopter or Outcast into a 4-4. And next turn, once again. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's pretty unexciting with four lands. This seems a bit better. So we have two one mana enablers, a silver fur. So I have to decide if I want to keep both enablers or if we get rid of probably one of the removal effects, fatal push versus bowmasters. And uh, kind of like keeping the fatal push here, so we'll ditch bowmasters, keep two enablers, so we have a bit of redundancy. 
and then start with Fairy Seer to Scry. Don't think we need any of these. Put on blue white, picked up Spell Pierce, which could be a pretty important card for us. Don't think I need to keep it up on turn two, but on turn three it becomes more relevant. So let's Ninjutsu for blue. And then I can either replay Fairy Seer or play Outcast, which also gets buffed by the Silver Fur. I think I go for Fairy Seer here. Let's cry again. Foundry could be good with Outcast. Gives me kind of a mana sink. Um, can amp up the pressure slightly. The only issue is if I want to play Outcast plus Foundry, I won't have the mana to keep up Spell Pierce next turn. So, maybe I do bottom it and look for more ninjutsu cards instead. And then I can uh, maybe play outcast, keep up spell pierce next turn. Found a foundry anyways. So we'll get in for three. And then I think I still go for outcast since it can actually apply a bit of pressure here. And then next turn Foundry can turn it into a 4-4, perhaps. Opponent Cycle Sensor, unable to counter anything, since we kept up one mana. So Divine Purge or Lockdown here would be a must counter. Problem is, of course, Supreme Verdict is uncounterable, so that would get us next turn regardless. So that's a bit concerning. Get in for five. And then I can play Foundry, and then at the very least, if they Supreme Verdict, I can make a Servo. The alternative was just put Lurus in hand. Alright, opponent's gonna absorb Foundry. I guess I'll Spell Pierce now, since can't counter Supreme Verdict anyway. And that's the most likely sweeper for them to have. And then Foundry can certainly help out in a grindier game in addition to upgrading or outcast. Opponent's fourth line enters tapped. So sure, turn this into a 4-4. It's not going to be the best matchup for Fatal Push. Get in there, and then we can put Lotus in hand, as opposed to making a servo. I'll pay the two life, although I don't expect it to be super relevant. Bonus cycle sensor once again. Do we now see a board wipe? Alright, our opponent did not have a sweeper and explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's promising. We've got Outcast, which is also Thopter for Foundry. Although we might first want to ninjutsu with uh, Silver for Master here to get that in play. A couple ways we can go about it. Could also just play Foundry turn 1 and pass. But let's try this. Turn 1 outcast and then turn 2. Set up the ninjutsu up against Elves. Now Shepard's not a must answer early with Fatal Push so we can keep that one in play. And picking up a thousand face shadows, excellent. So I can attack with Outcast, Ninjutsu Master, and then replay Outcast. And then Outcast will help set up our Thousand Face Shadow next turn. So we can be hitting for a lot of damage. Shepard does make their green spells uncounterable, so we won't be able to spell peers or collected company either. Okay, well, let us take two, attack all out, and between Fatal Push and getting another Master in play, pretty sure this is gonna work out. Okay, 
so that's six damage. And just redeploy Outcast, I think. A 3-3 three, three, thanks to Double Master pumping it up. Now a Visionary. Good target for Fatal Push. With Lenor Elves and Castle, our opponent's not too far from activating Shepherd, so that's something to watch out for. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and attack with everyone. And then we can Fatal Push Visionary. Opponent's at three. Yeah, I don't see them getting out of this. Can put Lurus in hand since I don't really have a need for Foundry. Would rather have a 3-3 three, three unblockable at this point. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is okay. Um, we've got our Foundry plus Outcast to make a 4-4, four, four, although it won't be on turn 1. And then double Bowmasters, depending on the matchup, can be effective. I'll give it a shot. Could definitely line up poorly, depending on what we're up against. Turn 1 Giver of Runes. So turn 1 Foundry versus Outcast. If they have removal for Outcast, I'm going to be a little disappointed. So probably go for Foundry. A red-white deck could certainly have some cheap removal spells. And I'm counting on this 4-4. And Blink Moth Nexus, so maybe more of an artifact deck. Blink Moth we can try to take out with a Bowmasters. And a Scavenger, I see. It's an equipment deck. Opponent can protect Scavenger with Giver of Runes now. So I could shock in a Watery Grave, play Outcast, or I can just play Underground River. That way it's less suspicious that we leave up one mana. Even though long term it could be better to just take the two from Watery Grave so we don't repeatedly take damage off uh, our pain land. We'll try this approach. Arm Scavenger triggers, gets to find an equipment. And it's gonna be a Gold Vein pick. Another Blink Moth. Those flying blockers can also be a nuisance. And a gold vein pick. Opponent can equip for free, basically, because of the one mana discount. But we can block with our 4 4. Urban Champion gets to equip the gold vein for free as well. But that we can maybe snipe with the Bowmasters. So we'll see what happens. Now champion safe from Bowmasters. But opponent also doesn't have any good attacks. Unless they want to use Giver of Runes, but then that opens up the door for Fatal Push. So we'll see. Arm Scavenger, the bigger threat of the two. Opponent's going to go for protection from Colorless, and then now we can Fatal Push Scavenger. Okay. Even better would have been to block Fervent Champion, then wait for them to give it protection from Colorless, and then we can Fatal Push Scavenger anyways. Uh, that way they don't get to make the treasure token. Okay, so now what's our plan? Just play Ornithopter, turn that into a 4-4, and uh, can flash into Bowmasters or make a 1-1. So I'm probably okay to hit for 4. Could have also decided to put Lurus in hand, but that's more of a long-term plan. Champion attacks. So yeah, once again, we'll uh, make a 4-4, see if they want to give protection from Colorless, and then I still have the option of playing Bowmasters to at least chump Champion with the 1-1 token, so they don't get the treasure. But I might be more interested in, uh, and actually protection from Colorless means the Gold Vein pick falls off. So now Bowmasters can just snipe the champion. 
Otherwise, I could have waited until next turn to double Bowmasters for two damage. So this could be incredibly punishing. Yeah, protection from Colorless, not something you see very often, so it's leading to some uh, unconventional play patterns and causing mistakes. Citizen's Crowbar could blow up Foundry, but the damage has been done. And a Boots. Okay, lots of equipment, one card left in hand. And now we can put Lurus in hand as well if we'd like. Could attack with everyone if they block. Bowmasters can finish off the token, which I also don't mind. Opponent's gonna take it. In which case, probably fine to get Lurus in hand. And next turn, at the very least, I can replay Ornithopter right away. And if they haven't blown up our Foundry, that's another 4-4. One card left in hand. Better be a good one. Canyon can also turn into an extra card. Okay, Cloudsteel Kirin. That can potentially prevent them from losing the game if they manage to equip it. And with a boot stick and give it Hexproof. Although by itself it doesn't prevent them from losing the game, they need to equip it first. And we have a Soaring City in hand, which is actually a way to interact with our artifacts, even through a Giver of Runes. Our opponent's plan is to next turn equip Cloudsteel Kirin. But then they also still need to equip the boots on that creature to keep it safe. But then Kirin itself as an equipment doesn't have X-proof, so that can still maybe be bounced. So if my plan is to play Lurus, get back Ornithopter, I should probably do it now. So I don't think I need to keep up Soaring City. And if they blow up the Crowbar then uh, that's fine. Then I'll have fewer blockers. And then Foundry we can also just return next turn with Lurus. Okay, move to attackers. Two four fours get in there. Opponent has to block, but they can give protection from Colorless with Giver. And yeah, our opponent's game plan is going to be to equip Cloudsteel Kirin. And then the Soaring City is somehow going to be the deciding factor, I think. Could have also considered attacking with Bowmasters, so if it goes to the Graveyard, double Bowmasters could be an answer to Giver of Runes, which cannot protect itself from black. Our opponent's going to take it, that's a strange play, because uh, Cloudsteel is not going to prevent them from losing. Only when uh, Cloudsteel is reconfigured does it actually work. So yeah, what a strange game this was. Definitely got to see some unconventional interactions, but uh, those are the fun games usually that are more memorable. Sweet, so we got to rank up with our blue-black ninjas. Seems like a very solid deck for the latter. It has access to those powerful opening hands with Foundry into Ornithopter or even Changeling Outcast. And then the Silver for Master was also very impressive, especially alongside our Thousand Phase Shadow. Getting to make a bunch of copies of our Lord to set up a turn 3 win is always very exciting. And there are still a couple flex slots. If the meta turns into more creature decks, you can make room for more spot removal. And if there's more combo decks instead, you can maybe add more more discard spells to complement your spell pierces. So there are a few ways to build ninjas in Historic, but since the alchemy changes to some of our key cards, the deck seems quite competitive. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.